question and answer session at the end of our presentations and our discussion, and there will be someone with a floating microphone going around the room so you can stand. Uh, the person with the microphone will come to you, and uh, you'll be able to ask your questions, and we will hopefully respond. Uh, there are some free materials here, bumper stickers that we're providing through the Rutherford Institute, um, uh, bookmarks, and um, again, uh, thank you very much for coming. I have two distinguished uh, panelists with myself. I'm John Whitehead. This is Bruce Fines and David Swanson. Um, I will uh, give some opening remarks. Uh, Bruce will and David will as well. Then we will. Uh, I will pose some questions and some issues. We will discuss those. And like I said, at the end of the event, you will be able to uh, ask questions and we will, we will uh, respond. Uh, I am president of the Rutherford Institute and I'm a constitutional attorney and have been involved in cases of dealing with civil liberties before virtually every court in the United States, including the United States Supreme Court. So th again, thank you very much for coming. And uh, I'd like to open with a quote from someone I know you are familiar with. <laughs> <laughs> Let me begin. Only an alert and knowledgeable citizenry can compel the proper meshing of the huge industrial and military machinery of defense with our peaceful methods and goals so that security and liberty may prosper together. As we peer into society's future, we, you and I, and our government, must avoid the impulse to live only for today, plunder it, for our own ease and convenience, the precious resources of tomorrow. <coughs> we cannot mortgage the material assets of our grandchildren without risking the loss also of their political and spiritual heritage. We want democracy to survive for all generations to come, not to become the insolvent family of tomorrow. Thus spoke President Dwight D. Eisenhower 50 years ago in his uh, well-known farewell address. January 1961, where he says, as American citizens, we must remain alert and knowledgeable uh, and guard against the expansion of the military empire, which he uh, labeled the military industrial complex, if we were to maintain our balance between liberty and security. Uh, sadly, uh, to our detriment, we have failed to heed Eisenhower's warnings. In fact, it is my opinion that our nation is at an all-time low, morally, socially, economically, and politically. And despite all the protests we see, the rallies, the wake-up calls, most Americans that I talk to and deal with remain clueless, fixated on whatever the fleeting news stories of the 24-hour talking heads deem to be important. All the while, most people are vaguely aware of the sea change is occurring in American culture, and the freedoms that we once cherished are being eroded uh, on, on every front. The government has gone, gone to incredible lengths to use its vast arsenal of technological weapons uh, against us. In fact, uh, in a, a series of well-written articles in the Washington Post, Dana Priest and William Arkin, after months-long uh, investigation, concluded Technologies and techniques honed for the use on the battlefields of Iraq and Afghanistan have migrated into the hands of law enforcement agencies in America. Let me capsulize a few of these changes we've seen where technologies used in the battlefields have now turned inward on American citizens. Full body scanners <coughs> in airports that can see us naked through our clothing but cannot reveal the most valuable thing in terms of security, and that's what's in body cavities. In other words, this is a program with few guarantees and success, numerous pitfalls, not the least of which is the toll it takes on our civil liberties and uh, the risk it poses to our health from the radiation of the machines. Mobile versions of airport body scanners now are in nondescript vehicles that roam cities. They are manned by government agencies, and whatever this, these vans pass, they can see in their homes, your offices, what's on your person. In other words, the government now, through, with these particular uh, devices, can now do drive-by strip searches of your person, your home, and watch what you're, you're doing in the privacy of your home. Iris scanners, now being used by American police agencies on American soil, can capture scans of individuals as far as six feet away. Again, that's going to improve as the technology improves. And what these are eventually going to become, in my opinion, are de facto national ID cards, whether we like it or not. Smart police cars 
are now equipped with license plate cameras, computers, GPS projectiles, which actually allow the police car to shoot at a distance a projectile on your automobile and track you with, of course, uh, electronic means. Even heat detectors on the grills of these cars can distinguish between, between people and animals. The police now also have smartphones, which contain the latest technologies for identifying so-called suspects. What this means is that the government now can pinpoint you, if they want, whether you're guilty of anything or not, exactly where you are on any given day. If you have the bad luck to be at the wrong place at the wrong time, whether it's criminal or not, the burden of proving your innocence will be on you. Drones, which most of you know are pilotless, remote-controlled aircraft that, that have been used in Iraq and Afgan Afghanistan, have come under increased Criticism are a $2 billion cornerstone of the Obama administration. Four efforts have increasingly found their favor with both military and American law enforcement officials. They are now, uh, they are now on American soil. Some police agencies have used these to uh, track, monitor, protest so-called uh, dissenters in this, in this country. Fusion centers, which are data collection agencies, are spread across the United States. Uh, they constantly monitor, monitor our communications in conjunction with groups like the National Security Agency. Everything from the activity that you uh, conduct on the internet, web searches on your telephones, emails, etc. And all these agencies now, all the intelligence agencies are interconnected, the CIA to the FBI, the FBI to the local police, which in my opinion will make a move to martial law a lot easier. Added to this arsenal of technology, we now have a shadow government fully staffed by unelected officials ready to take over the running of the country at a so-called time of emergency. Secret prisons now exist in the United States where American citizens have been snatched up and made to disappear with no access to a lawyer or the legal system. Massively growing databases containing information on otherwise ordinary Americans are reported for such suspicious behavior as Gazing at a bridge or taking a picture of a toll group. People have been arrested for this across the country. And of course, the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq have now cost taxpayers more than $1 trillion already. And American soldiers are now deployed on American soil, performing police actions in violation of federal law. So what, we've, uh, what has happened to this country is we've now moved into a suspect society. Uh, we are no longer presumed innocent until proven guilty, but everyone's a suspect. For example, as part of the Department of Homeland Security's If You See Something, Say Something campaign, uh, our government is urging Americans to spy on one, one another, aided by large corporations such as Walmart. And in my opinion, this merger of the government and the corporate state of uh, America is a subtle move toward a total control society. Uh, also, uh, as I view things, our government has been hijacked by a wealthy elite whose pockets are lined by corporate America and who have basically no idea what it takes for average Americans as you and I just to get by on a daily basis. And, dis and again, despite the numerous protests and rallies we see, <coughs> Washington elite, which is the president, Congress, and the huge bureaucracy of corporate contractors that support them, move steadily forward with this agenda of control, paying little attention to uh, what America really uh, wants in, in terms of what I see the citizens want, want. In short, we have become a people enslaved by the very institution, the United States government, in an unholy alliance with corporate America that was entrusted to guard our freedoms. As the great abolitionist Frederick Douglass fittingly remarked once, I didn't know I was a slave until I found out I couldn't do the things I wanted. The question, of course, is, and we'll talk more about this, these two gentlemen will, we've all had a part to play in it uh, for what we've seen develop in this country. The American people due to their cluelessness and gullibility, the corporations who sold us out long ago for profits, the federal government for using our tax dollars to basically create a suspect state, the lobbyists who have greased the wheels of politics in order to ensure that they make profits, the courts for failing to guard our civil liberties as vigilantly as they should, and our so-called representatives for basically uh, failing us and not uh, taking care of our civil liberties as they should. 
as to whether there can be anything that we can do. And that's why we're here today. We want to talk about this. We've traveled a long way down this road, maybe too far for anything to be accomplished. But I'm not one to give up. I think once I know this to be true, once an authoritarian state is given power, it's very, very difficult to wrest it back. But I think we have to try. And that's what I spent my life doing. This is what David Swanson does and Bruce Fine. So the question is, what can we do? We're going to talk about that. But let me end my, end my opening remarks with a quote from Martin Luther King, who declared in 1967, one year exactly before he was assassinated, he says, a nation that continues year after year to spend more money on military defense than on programs of social uplift is approaching spiritual death. Now I'd like Bruce Fine to give his opening remarks and just a few uh, notes on the credentials of Bruce Fine. He is author of The American Empire Before the Fall, a very fine book. He's also author of Constitutional Peril, an author. Bruce Fine commands, in my opinion, uh, unsurpassed uh, Agilence for what he does and what he has done. He attended Swarthmore at the University of California at Berkeley. He graduated Phi Beta Kappa with honors. He also graduated from Harvard Law School with honors. Bruce has been an Associate Deputy Attorney General of the United States, an adjunct scholar with the American Enterprise Institute, a resident scholar at the Heritage Foundation, a lecturer at the Brookings Institute, and a resident scholar at uh, George Washington. Bruce has authored several volumes on the U.S. Supreme Court, the U.S. Supreme U.S. Constitution and international law. He's assisted two dozen countries in constitutional revision and advised over 20 heads of state and presidents of foreign nations, plus four American presidents, members of Congress, and the House of Commons. He writes a weekly column for the Washington Times. Bruce is the founding partner of the law firm Fine and Fine. I think.